this illusion is called blood written. Illusions are what I call my paintings now, as I am scarred by illusion, it only makes sense. So to start, this concept is sort of a spin on my headless figure or figures, if you're familiar with them. Although this concept came about towards the beginning of the headless series and sort of snowballed into what it is now. There's also a subcurrent theme of torso figures with gaping holes or voids in them, however you want to perceive them. Sometimes the voids are mouths too, so. And also, like, sometimes the voids are just voids, but as with most concept sketches, it was the body for this rather than the simplicity as it's been in some of the other ones. For this one, it was the intricacy of it. As you'll see, <laughs> I I make it to look like there are eyes between the pseudo ribs, and like the body is sort of collapsing while also looking a bit emaciated. And with the pseudo ribs containing eyes in between them, the void or the hole in the torso is then the mouth gasping, drawing in breath desperately. Then to top it off. The head is non-existent, yet there is a mouth reminiscent of a Venus flytrap. I think it has a dark whimsy to it. Do you agree? Unsolicited explanation aside, I've been thinking, as always, but a lot yesterday so much so, I almost couldn't sleep because ideas kept popping in my head. One was brought about by the question I've seen, musical artist mostly asked and it was if they could talk or have dinner with anyone dead or alive who would it be and me <laughs> pretending they asked me i'd have no clue what to say um who to say really until now i have entertained Anne rice before but i i changed my mind and i also think i would change it to being pen pals with this person i would choose zora neale hurston which isn't really a big surprise if you've seen any of my other previous videos. Um, and I choose her because I relate to her sense of curiosity, being that she was an anthropologist, a world traveler, a hoodoo slash voodoo practitioner, sort of, and a writer. I think I share a similar curiosity. And she was curious in a time of segregation, but her upbringing was a bit isolated and that she was raised in an all-black founded and developed town in Florida so she never experienced the world as others in that time often did. When I watched a, a biography about her upbringing, her upbringing was her strength and naturally as your youth is it was vital to her becoming who she was yet in her career and in the political ugh, the political sphere at that time, her upbringing created a detachment from the world and others of her race, and that was sort of her downfall. And to elaborate on that, she wasn't in support of desegregation because she thought it would um, dissolve what remained of black culture post-slavery. And in a way, it, it did. I can see that now because... Black culture is uh, kind of integrated with pop culture now, in a way, and there's no way to sort of reclaim that, and also, like, you could go, there's a rabbit hole, I could go down, but I'll stop there, and um, they also didn't like her writing style. Other writers, contemporaries of hers, were very critical of her, particularly for her work in their eyes for watching God, because it, it, the portrayal of black people in the vernacular that was used contrasted with what other black writers which were kind of um projecting this wide this wide band of black excellence and if you weren't depicting that or the struggle then it wasn't really received or appreciated well they, they <laughs> so it was like she was representing a sort of people but it wasn't the people that the Harlem Renaissance aimed to uplift or shine light on. So, they didn't like that. Um, her focus was love and death, and that's so me. 
loving things to death. It makes me think of that Lord lyric, um, minus the part about her mom, because my mom is not like that. And it's like, I love you till you call the cops on me. And then for me and Bo Zora, I would probably choose um, the Cream Bailey Ray lyric from the State of Bliss, It Turns to Agony. That's seasons change. It's when, ugh, when seasons change. And that's part of what I fear as I put my art and more of myself out into the world. Um, I I spoke about a Gali Ucha song, and I'm going to do it again. I did it in my last video. I have a problem. Um, I just got to put myself out there. Don't put myself out there. Usually I stay tucked away. That's a loner. And I also feel a lot in the back of my head. It's been repeating. It's Sky Ferreira. Everything's embarrassing. I don't think that really needs explanation, but, you know, that everything and nothing always haunts me. Yes, absolutely. I studied psychology briefly. So briefly, I don't even have an associate's in it, but I was torn between psychology, sociology, and anthropology, but anthropology wasn't an option at the community college I attended. And I was forced to choose between psychology and sociology, which I thought was for the best because at the time, and even now to this day, I feared the racism I would encounter within anthropological studies. I don't talk about it, but I really have a fear of racism, um, experiencing racism, being consciously aware of it, and, you know, it's just that feeling of helplessness. I think in the past I have experienced racism, which might also be a reason why I'm like, I don't ever want to do that again. I don't want that experience. I don't, no, no, no. I think in elementary school, the principal was racist because she was treating me weird, to be honest. Like, she never, uh, it was, uh, specifically, there was a time I was sent to the principal's office with, um, I want to say two other girls. We were all blackish. I'm blackish. That's how I, it's easier to call myself. But it ended with her telling us not to become strippers. Mind you, we were 10 or 11 at that time. I don't know how old specifically it was. I don't even know what we did that resulted in us being sent to the office. And I was never in trouble in school. I don't see how in any way it merited her telling us not to become strippers, other than the fact that we were <laughs> blackish girls. And she treated other girls, like, very different. Very different. And I was like, and she saw me on other occasions, because I did well in school, so I was, like, at award ceremonies and such, and she never spoke to me. I was like, I don't know. Something about her. She was a little, I don't know. There's, like, a vibe from her that's, it was icky. It was, it was, it was icky. Um... And not to mention, when I was in 8th grade, I had a friend who got um, in-school suspension for calling the science teacher racist. And that was even after she apologized, but, like, being punished for just having an opinion. But I, I think it was somewhat evident that there were some issues, you know, and it's representative of, like, the whole, you know, national issue. So I, all the kids in in-school suspension, out-of-school suspension, they were, they were brown. So I don't really doubt the prison system pipeline. In my last video, I watched, correlating to Zora Neale Hurston, Alice Walker, who sort of reanimated Zora's legacy, read a poem. Um, I'll just quote about it, and just, and it was to be nobody's darling, to be an outsider. So, yeah, I choose Zora Neale Hurston. If you take anything away from this video, it is art, truly art, and art goes on, so I will, in my next video.